Okay, today I'm going to go over the uh, tab bar controller uh, section of um, of the book, of the Swift book. And in this case, um, if you look at the, the tab bar, I think this is the uh, navigational way that we will complete a app for a park. And so in this case, uh, let's go through this um, assignment first. And then um, I will then learn, then show you how to integrate the uh, uh, different screens into our own app. But at the, in this case, let's go through this uh, uh, lesson together. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind is if you look, the tab bar controller is basically where you have a bar that goes along the bottom of an app that has different icons, and those different icons represents the different sections of the um, app so if you see here you know you got the world clock you get so they're the clock app so I'm thinking we can do uh, like a home like an about so about the park and then we can do a uh, like a camping or or um, some kind of info maybe uh, so about maybe a camping type of screen then uh, a map and then uh, a link to the website so I'm thinking four different screens uh, is what I'm looking at. So we'll make four different icons. Um, one of the things to keep in mind is, is, as far as the icons are concerned, each icon will have two states to them. And I didn't, didn't explain that in my first uh, um, icon lesson, so I'm kind of explaining it now. That I would actually make two different states, one for uh, when you're not on that section or one when you're on that section. We, we refer to that as selected in the uh, programming, or at least in the in the interface when you're choosing the artwork. So I'm gonna make actually two different pieces of artwork, one for, like I said, for when you're not uh, on that section and one when you are on that section. So one is uh, normal and one is selected. I don't know, it's almost like when you'd have two states on a website, right? So, um, keep that in mind uh, let's go through the lesson and then I'll show you how to make the artwork uh, first thing though before you even start if you're gonna use the graphics that they have provided us um, they have provided us if you go to the student resources folder um, that comes with the book and if you don't have the students resource folder it's like the third page of the book there's a button that says download and you can just download it inside there there is one for uh, we're in section 3 and we're in the tabbed bar controllers so if I turn a, the tab bar controllers open here you'll see that it has PDF so these are vector images that are used for um, each of the different um, screens that you're gonna make so we'll have a, a, a red screen that's what the R is for and then we have an orange and then blue and then green and then yellow and so that's why they have these different And if you open one up so again you notice one is selected so if we open that up oh, open that up you'll just see it's a a big B with a round edge okay so again the selected one is kinda solid with white letters in it you see that and then the normal one that's not is is kind of white with a black so kind of making opposite as you can see um, flipping from one to the other is is what um, it'll do so kind of kind of opposite so you know so we can make those we'll, we'll I'll show you how to do that uh, once we get to there first thing I'm gonna do is open up Xcode here again I'm using Xcode 10 um, I know 11 is out now we will uh, I'm gonna create a new project and it'll be a single view app next and we're gonna call it uh, I think they told us to call it in the book um, 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 color hold on let me get back to the book here so we can see what to call it uh, oh, oh there we go uh, they want us to call it rainbow tabs rainbow tabs so I'm gonna go back to uh, Xcode and call it rain rainbow tabs and I'm gonna say next to that and I'm gonna choose a folder and I'm gonna hit next and then uh, again uh, I'm not really gonna change anything in here I'm gonna just leave everything default for right now so uh, maybe uh, iPhone for the device. How about that? Okay, so 
we'll just go with the default settings and everything. So the first thing uh, we're going to do is import those uh, graphics that I just showed you. So to import those graphics, let me minimize the book here for a moment. Let me minimize whatever this is. And I'm going to go to that folder where it was. And so to import the graphics into... Um, into Xcode again you should have an assets assets folder right here and so you want to select all the PDFs that are in here you can use the shift key to select all the PDFs in there and then just drag them into this window right here for the assets assets so you bring them all in and you don't need to have and I know when we and I haven't talked about this and I do actually have a, um, some reading that we'll do I have a handout again about how to do the 1x 2x 3x that I've been, um, I just scanned into the computer for you, and we'll do that in another uh, lesson. But in this case, you'll notice uh, we really don't need when we're using vector graphics. We don't need a 1x, 2x, 3x because the 1x, the vector graphics can scale to any size, and it'll still be um, sharp and, and fine. Only really need to do different graphics like this if you're going to use a, a PNG um, or some other kind of um, graphics. So. In this case, I would uh, not worry about that right now. Let's go back to the storyboard. Okay, so the first thing you want to do in your storyboard is we're going to have uh, uh, one screen that's going to be uh, red. So I'm going to click on uh, the box here in the, in the center of my view controller here. And again, I'm in the main storyboard. Click in the center of view controller. And of course, in our background image right here, I can choose uh, a, a other color. And I'm going to choose red and uh, um, let's make it kind of a red red there we go so again uh, we're doing a background color for this one we'll call it red right now now to do the tab controller is almost like uh, to do the tab controller is very much like doing a table um, and I don't think we kinda did a table one in 3.6 but it, it wasn't quite um, uh, we, we just did it briefly uh, it's a little bit different this one again in the last one in 3.6 in there let me pause this for a second so in this case, uh, uh, to import or, or start with the tabbed menu, uh, the easiest way that I found is to go up here to the editor, and then go to embed in, and we're going to do a tabbed bar. The last uh, lesson we did a navigational controller, we're going to do a tabbed bar controller right here. And if I click on that, it's going to import and put this uh, tabbed bar. It's like a, a, an overlay, okay? So this is kind of an overlay. You'll notice right here at the very bottom, it has a little item down here. And you'll notice the item shows up. So each, each view controller will have its own little um, graphic. And they call it an item down there for now. But we'll customize it and everything. You don't really need to mess with the tab controller at this point. You might move this window a little bit. I'm going to zoom out just briefly so you can see kind of the flow. I'm going to kind of move it up here for now. And then uh, they want you to make another one, a separate uh, view controller. So in this case, to make a second view controller, oh, again, I, I'm using the older version of Xcode. And I did install the newer one. Um, let me pause this and, and get back. I'm going to actually change this uh, project I'm working on. Let me pause this right now, and I'll, I'm going to open up the latest version on that I have on this computer. Okay, I'm back with the uh, newer version of uh, Xcode. Uh, the last one that you saw me starting the Rainbow uh, project in was X Xcode 9. Um, this now is Xcode 10, which now has the... Uh, um, the insert bar up here. So the next step is to insert a second view controller. To do that is up here in the um, library and again I'm going to put another view controller on. So I'm just going to drag that out and put it kind of towards the bottom. And then this one is going to be uh, colored orange. So again click in the uh, view option down here in the in the main view area here and go to the attributes area over here and we're going to change the background color to uh, orange. So again, I'm going to bring up the custom and change this to orange. So right now, uh, we have one view controller uh, that is red and another one that is uh, orange. And this tab, you don't really change anything in here. Um, 
it's used to control this tab that you see down here. So we need to add another tab right now. We haven't adjusted the tabs yet, but we need to, as you can see here, we have one little blue box right here. That one is referencing uh, this one, the red one. And so we need to add a, another one, a, a navigation for the orange one. To add the navigation, we're going to hold down the control key. So I'm going to click over here on the tab bar controller. I'm going to hold the control key down, and I'm going to click and drag to this one. And then when I release my mouse, it's going to come up, what do you want to do? And we want to do the, the option that says view controllers, view controllers. So where it says relation segue, we're going to say view controllers. I know we've done show before. We've done present model E before. But this time we're going to do view controllers. And I'm going to release them. I'm going to click there. And again, it puts uh, a link to there. So as you can see, we have two uh, links right now. And you are, now you'll see you have two items here. So next thing is we want to, instead of it right now, it just says item and it has a little square thing. We're going to go and put um, some uh, icons in there. Again, the icons are going to go, uh, you actually put them in the view controller here. So in this case, you'll see that there is a bar menu bar that goes along the bottom here. And I'm going to click down there. When I click down there, uh, for the red one, you'll notice it comes up with this tab bar item under the attributes inspector here. Uh oh, hold on a minute. So again, once you click down here, you'll notice you'll have this tab bar that shows up over here. So inside here, uh, there's some default ones that you could use, and there's a whole list of them. I think I, I, I there's a list of them that are linked to the um, um, on the on the website on the Apple website. You can actually see the the list of them. Uh, here's a few of them that are in here, built in here right now. And again, you know, favorites is a common one. And so the book talks about putting favorites. So let's get back to the book for a minute. I'm sorry, I kind of jumped ahead here. I didn't really follow the book, but I was following the book. <laughs> I was just doing it. Um, again, we talked about the tab controller. And then again, dragging from uh, the tab controller here to the orange one. That doesn't look very orange, though. <laughs> And then again, you see there's some navigation components there. And then uh, again, here is the list. Uh, I just put favorites in there. They told you to put favorites in just so you could see that there is some pre-made ones in there as well. Um, again, they talk about the orientation and showing you how the text will change. So, um, you know, right now we put favorites in there. So if you if you test your your app right now and you rotate it, it it'll actually show right now in the in the in the portrait mode the word is underneath the icon but in the landscape mode the icon and the word will be next to each other that's all they're saying about here and then if you go instead of using and then here's the icons that they have so there's a link here to the uh, to the uh, icons that are on the um, website and they talk about icons and making your own icons so we're gonna go and make our own in a little bit I will actually show you how to do that so um, you'll notice that they have a solid one with a white do you see that solid one with a white and then kind of a grayed one with a white um, like this um, so you, you want to have them so that they're easy to see okay so um, as you can see you know nice size it doesn't really matter at this point I know they have d dimensions here but if you make them um, specific uh, vectors then you don't really need to worry as long as they're square right as long as they're square and so they show you certain things about graphics about uh, um, heights and width and so some things that are not square um, you can make but you just need to consider the ratio um, that they would be in so that's sort of what they're talking about from the link uh, again this is called custom icons and the system icons is what I wanted to talk about right here again these are the common ones that that you can install and you can see them now here common icons you've seen these all on the Apple before in your interface as well so that's what uh, the link is from the book here right here Again, what we're going to do is they got a red one and a, um, and a red one and a red one selected. And again, one is for when the person is clicking on there and the other one is for when they're, they're not on that section. 
So the selected one is when they're on that section right there. So let's get back. So again, uh, to change it here, instead of favorites, we're going to go and choose uh, um, custom. custom. And in custom, we're going to go down to where it says selected image, where it says selected image. And we're going to go to one that says, and this is red, we're going to go to O selected, for, or no, R selected, sorry, <laughs> for red selected. R selected, and you see the R shows up right there. In addition, down here where it says the menu bar, um, we're going to click in the title there, and we're going to call it red because this is the red one. That'll be the text that shows up. So there you see how the text shows up now, red. And then for the image, we're going to use the uh, regular um, R, not the um, not the selected one. So the selected one is when you're on that section. Okay, so. Um, there it is so they have that one so let's go down to the orange one and do the same thing so I'm gonna click on the orange one down there and we're gonna go up here to where it says selected image and we're gonna choose the O selected for orange selected and then into the title bar we're gonna call this orange then we're gonna to go to where it says image and we're gonna choose O and so we have an orange one Okay, so if we test it now, you'll see we have some some menu items over here. So let, let's just uh, save this for a moment, and then let's test it. And uh, you'll see how the navigation works for this item. And here we go. Oh, it takes a minute to load. I guess I'm on the iPhone 12. I'm still living with the iPhone 8 in my hand here. So you see, since we're on the red one, you'll notice it's blue and kind of big, right? And then when we click on the orange one, you'll notice this one's blue and this one kind of grayed out. See that back and forth, back and forth. So very simple, easy navigation to go from one view controller to the other view controller using the tabbed menu at the bottom of the screen. Um, many apps use that. Um, and uh, I find it very uh, useful and I think um, this is the way we'll make the park app. So let me close this and finish up with the, the lesson that we have here. So uh, one of the things they talk about in the book I'm really not going to do but you can try as well is how you can add a badge. Uh, in this case, oh, let me finish with these. Yeah, we did the orange. We did the orange. So there's a thing called badge in there. If you want, um, you can add a explanation point to your icon which means that there is some new items that are for that section hence think of your uh your your mail app right your your email app on your phone and how it comes up with a little badge they call that a badge a little alert that you get that says hey you got something new um click here right uh, most of the time you would do that programmably and they're showing you the programmable way of doing it over here because most likely if you had new data you would want it to be programmable you don't really need to do it um, by by the menu item like they show here so just keep that in mind there is a badge I'm not going to do the badge but that's the badge item and so if you're doing like the email app and stuff and new data comes in you can then just turn the the badge value to uh, the explanation point or how many uh, number most likely you would change it to a number like in my email I'm often getting three or four emails at a time you could do that I believe as well because my email I believe has a number there so let's look at a couple more items you've probably noticed that the current version of your project doesn't live up to its rainbow tab so they want you to add a couple more and so they talk about adding more and as you add more it'll add more items down there so let me quickly go and add a couple more real quick and then we'll talk a little bit about what happens if you have too many items and you need a more option. They actually have a more option as well. Um, I don't know if I'll demonstrate that, but let, let me pause this for a second. Okay, I've made uh, two more here in this case. And so, uh, again, you can click on the tab bar to make a link to it. You hold down the control key and click it onto the yellow one. And again, view controllers. And then this one as well, this blue one right here, control click onto that one and say view controller. So now we actually have um, four of them. 
and then just practice again to put in the uh, icons you click on the uh, icon itself right here and you can go to where it says uh, custom here and we're gonna use the normal Y, -Y. <laughs> the Y selected for this one again the first one is the selected one and then of course you give it a name and then uh, for the image for that one we do the plain Y and then for this one is B so we're gonna use selected uh, image we're gonna do a uh, selected B and then under here we're gonna call it blue and then for the image we're gonna do the normal B normal B so again you can see how the navigation works. You don't really mess with the view contr tab controller here. You don't have to change anything on that. You notice it just has them all along the bottom. Now it's going to start with the red one since that was the first one we made. Um, it automatically goes to that first one, I believe, and then it'll go to the other ones because you notice it's on the left side here. I don't know if you can rearrange these here. I don't, oh, oh, I just did rearrange it. Did you see that? I clicked and dragged it there. So let's see if it starts with the orange one now because I, I dragged it from here over to this side. I think it'll actually start now with the orange one. Did you see how I clicked and dragged inside this menu here? So let's see. Let's that, That's going to be a good uh, thing if we can figure out how to reorder them. Let's hit, let's hit the, the preview button here and see how it'll actually go and uh, change if we're able to change the order right here inside of the tab right there. And uh, here's it. Oh, yeah, it did. See, now it's starting with orange. So again, it looks like it's going to start with the one that's on the left side. And I was able to just simply drag in there to the left side. And you can see all the different icons. Okay, let's get back to the reading. And then I'll talk about uh, making our own custom icon uh, by um, um, using the Internet and, of course, Illustrator and, uh, and practicing that. So let's uh, uh, finish the reading here so if we get back to the oh not the human interface guidelines which was pretty good there um, <coughs> so again in the reading they talk about making the other ones and then if you have too many of them they talk about how you can do a more and when you do the more pop-up it'll give you a, a kind of a list menu like this and then you can actually choose uh, which one and then you can actually re reorder them. I'm not actually going to do that. I'm sure you can figure that out. So just read what it says about how to make the more. There's a more option where you get a more in the corner. So I'm not going to actually do that. Let's just jump to uh, uh, programming for just a minute. Uh, again, I think the, the last in-person lecture we had in class I was showing you that you can make your own Swift files for the specific um, um, the specific uh, uh, view controllers and we're gonna have to do that for the park app in that case when we do the uh, programming for the map it should have its own view controller when we do the programming for uh, um, a park, or I meant um, for a camping kind of thing, we're going to do, um, it needs to have its own view controller, as well as uh, programming for uh, a web page needs its own. So each view controller in this case needs to have its own Swift file. So we're going to demonstrate that again. That was probably the last thing I showed when we were together in class. So uh, let me get back to uh, Swift for a moment. So uh, let me reorder mine back to uh, the way it was. I'm going to notice how I just clicked and dragged it there. So red is first here. Let's get to the view controller over here. So right now the first one that we have here, it has this view controller right now that we see over here is uh, the view controller for um, the red one right here. Okay, so in this uh, main storyboard, we're going to change the default view controller and we're going to call it red. I'm going to just, you can just rename it right there by clicking on the text like you would change the name or anything and call it red in front of that red view controller. Then we're going to go back to the main storyboard and I'm going to click on the top of the red one in the tab that's at the very top up here. And I'm going to go over here to make sure it, where it says class again over here in the, um, show the identity inspector it's not not it's next to the attributes it's over here show the identity inspector where it says class we're gonna make sure it says 
the red view controller, the one we just made. Oh, I guess I didn't. It's here. Is it not there? It should. Maybe it just needs to take effect. Let me click here again. Uh, no, it's not showing me. Oh, maybe I need to scroll. No. I was hoping that that would just show up there. That's normally what I, do, I would do there. Hmm. Okay, I don't know why it's not showing up there. Maybe let's read the, the book. Okay, so currently only one view, only the controller with the red view can be customized with the code because it's the only controller you use the UI view controller subclass. That subclass is called view controller. That's what we just did. It was created as part of a single view app template and much to the point you add functions to other controllers such as fetching data and whatever. Regardless of responsibility, the high clearance you'll need to use code in order to perform tasks. You'll need an additional view controller for the subclass. Begin by renaming the existing view controller, which I just did, to something more descriptive like red view controller, which I just did. Update the class definition, then rename the, the view controller swift to red view. Update the class definition. Uh, update the class definition. Oh, we got to change the name in the class. That was my mistake. In the code, we need to change it to red view controller. That's what I didn't do. So, again, once we renamed it, once we renamed it, okay, here we go. We need to go inside the code itself and change this where it says view controller here to red, R E D. So, at the very beginning where it says class, we need to change it to red view controller right there so that it knows. That this one is it. So again, I'm going to go back to the main storyboard. And I was doing it right. I just didn't go into the code and change that. So not only did you change the name here, you go into code and change the name there. So once we go back to the main storyboard and we click up here at the bar, we should be able to go over here to the, again, it's underneath the um, identity inspector. And we should be able to change this now. Hopefully it says red view controller in there now. There it is. It does say red view controller. So we do that. So let's do another one. We'll do orange view controller, yellow view controller, and then um, I'm going to kind of quit this and then I'll go into um, starting kind of the um, park app using this kind of model right here. Um, mostly making the icons. So that's probably what I'll show now. So um, again, how do you make your own? So again, I want to make a, a view controller just for the orange one right here. Just for the orange one. So we're going to go into to make a new Swift file uh, for that. We're going to go under File, New, File. And we're going to use what's called a Coco Touch class right here, this one right here. And I'm going to say Next. And this one, again, we're going to give it a name. The name is going to be Orange View Controller, like that. So I'm just giving it a name. And it's going to be a subclass of the uh, UI view controller. So just the, the UI view controller. So make sure you change this in the subclass. Uh, it is a Swift file. You don't need the IB, uh, X, XIB file um, right now. And so again, view orange view controller, UI view controller, Swift. And then say next. It's going to ask you where to save it. Just save it in the same default. Don't change anything where it's saving it. And that's fine. We're saving it in the same folder. Hit create. And so now it makes a new one. Notice it says orange view controller right here. See it right here. So uh, we're going to go now to our main storyboard. And so for the programming this now for the orange section, you click on the blue. The bar at the top is usually what I click on to make it blue. Then over here where the um, show identity inspector is right here, we're going to go to where it says class right here. And of course, we're going to choose the orange view controller. So now this orange one has its own programming file. Basically, what that is is a programming file. So again, the red one has a different programming file than the orange one. And then you, you can figure out the, the yellow one and blue one. Let me do one more for the yellow so that you can uh, get the idea one more time. So we're going to make one more view controller for the yellow one. To do that, again, is under File, New, File. And I'm going to go again, Coco Touch class. And I'm going to say next. And again, it says view controller here. So we're going to call this one yellow. Yellow view controller. And again, the subclass is a UI view controller. It's going to be Swift right here. Say next. Uh, it's going to save it in the same folder as the other ones. Don't change that. Hit create. And then it makes it. Go back to your storyboard. 
And then for your uh, yellow one, again, click on the bar at the top. Go to the uh, identity inspector right there and under class choose of course the yellow one that we just made would be at the bottom probably there it is right there so now this one has its own programming window so when we go to do uh, the park app we'll have one for uh, the uh, web page one for a map one for uh, the home page and then one for um, um, camping or extra I don't know quite yet um, I'll have to think about that but uh, let's pause this video now and then I'll talk about making uh, your own icons down here and how to put them into uh, Xcode.